Welcome to Life Mastery Radio with Todd Allen and Jackie Bailey, the show that dives into the science of higher consciousness with inspiring topics such as abundance, intention, health, manifestation, love, and transformation. Join Todd, Jackie, and their guests of leading authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific. Learn to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery. It's all right here with stories and messages to support your well-being and most evocative dreams. Now, here's your hosts, Todd and Jackie. Hey, 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 it's another groovy day, and you know what? It, that intro never gets old. I, I, <laughs> and if you watch, if you watch my, my guest and my co-host, Jackie, and they were just grooving to the tune. So, I mean, that's, that right there proves it's another groovy day. Another reason is because when I wake up, I make it that way. Try it it can work for you too or you could make it a happy day or a lovely day or anything you choose just as long as you start that day with that intention works like magic try it you'll like it (laughs) as always i have my co-host writing well i'm not gonna say that i say that sometimes writing shotgun and that just doesn't fit with like mastery radio so hi jackie (laughs) hello Great How to see are you, you today? This is the second to last show before the end of the year. Wow. Where did 2022 go? I don't know, but I'm kind of glad it's going, quite frankly. <laughs> you know what? You know what other what else is interesting is if you think about it, we probably did 50. 50 mm-hmm. live shows, plus or minus a couple. I think we had a few replays. So okay, 45. Mm-hmm. But still, that's a lot. Yeah. If you think back and think about all those cool people that we had on the show with their great thoughts and ideas for people to take or leave and put in their toolbox for their own life mastery journey. I mean, it's, and then you take it a step up and you go to our YouTube channel. There's over 300 shows on our YouTube. I know. Did we really talk to that many people? We did. And, And they were all awesome people. You know, it's, it's so amazing that the brilliance that people have that they bring to the table and that they're spreading out to the world. And I love that we can be part of helping them get their, the word out and they're influencing and inspiring so many people. It's pretty darn cool. Actually. Well, like I always say, if we, if we made a difference in just one person's life, that, that show, we did our job. And the other cool part is you and I get to find out what people are thinking and, you know, on the cutting edge of empowerment and, and instilling, you know, a, a, a reality check. Oh, there's that word reality. We're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. And, and helping people with prosperity. I think that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. I mean, everyone we've ever interviewed has had some life changing message, large and small that for the right person, ah, you know, the, the light comes down from heaven, the, the angelic <laughs> choir starts to sing and you have that epiphany, like, I never thought about it that way before, or I, that's exactly what I need to do, or now I understand this even better. I mean, all of those little aha moments that, that we have, and most of the time it's because we're hearing somebody say something, Right. And so when we're listening to these kinds of shows, podcasts, radio shows, that's where we get that's where we get those epiphanies and the and the inspirational moments. So I'm I'm so grateful that uh Todd, that you and I can put this out there to people. That's why I show up every week and I know it's <laughs> why you show up every week. And yeah. How how are things at the Speak Feed Lead Project? You know, December's a slow month because kids are looking forward to being out of school for a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm looking forward to that, quite frankly, as well, <laughs> having a little bit of a break. Uh, but this week, we we created three new authors this week. Oh, boom. And these are all young adults. An 11-year-old girl and a 13-year-old girl and a 50 something year old man, but they are first time (laughs) authors, clients of ours, and they're getting their message out into the world. And it's, it's incredible. 
it's fun to see that. Yeah, I know. It's a happy dance for sure. That's that's <laughs> pretty cool. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So that book's going to hopefully be out by the end of this month. We're working hard to get that out there uh, so that we can shine the brilliance of these individuals out there into the world. Yeah. <laughs> happy holidays to all of you out there. Check out Jackie. You know, I want to remind everybody that today's show page is at www.lifemasteryradio.net or .com and you can go there any links that we talk about today i know our guest has a new year's eve celebration coming up that you don't want to miss and we'll put a link up there jackie will create a blog post i know for sure that link will be in her blog post and it will show up a little bit later this week but if you really want to stay informed sign up for the newsletter you can do it simply right there on the website and you will get a newsletter every week. It highlights who's been on the show, who's coming on the show, and of course, Jackie's blog post about the show. And I guarantee you, you read that blog post and it will entice you to go to the YouTube channel and actually listen to that show. Or you could just simply subscribe to the YouTube channel and you would get the, the new link every week. So lots of cool things to do. Both Jackie and I's book is there, my book, Six Keys to Life Mastery, and Jackie's book, Self-Centered Leadership, and a couple of other compilation books that she's in. Mm -hmm. She's just cruising. Okay, let's see. What else? I think that's about it. We last had our, today's guest almost exactly a year ago on our show, and yeah. in, in our, in our pre-show, I asked him, what's changed? And he just looked at me and said, everything. And I went... <laughs> Yeah, he's right. Everything has changed. <laughs> reality yeah. check, right? There's That's a reality exactly. check. Yeah. So we're going to get to hear about all those changes. So sure. this is Jackie's guest, and I'm yes. hoping and praying that Jackie has an introduction. I, Take I it away. Do. And I will first start that I tell you, I have had personal sessions with our guests. And he has really shown that light for me on some different issues and helped me to change my reality just by the magic that he does. So I'm grateful that he's here today. His name is Shiraz Babu. This season he's going by Santa Sh Santa Shaws. <laughs> he is he is an award-winning author, an international speaker, and a reality interventionist. He coaches people to get out of what he calls reality addiction. And his book is titled How to Rewrite Reality. It's changed lives across the globe, including mine. Shiraz helps you to annihilate your unconscious addiction to stories of struggle and lack, resulting in an abundance of free time, money, and energy. Shiraz's transformational workshops, which he's having one on New Year's Eve, and classes help his clients overcome issues with money, success, health, and relationships. His book contains important lessons on how you can change your stories. We are delighted to have him with us again on Life Mastery Radio. Welcome, Shiraz Babu. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie Todd. Delighted to be here again. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to see you. And uh, as I mentioned, you have this magic skill which you developed through which is often the case some challenges or some own challenges definitely. yeah so for those who maybe didn't learn about you a year ago do you want to start a little bit with your story and how you discovered your genius a little bit <clears throat> sure discovered my genius i like that <laughs> so in all of us yeah, uh, it is in all of us. Just got to discover it. <laughs> right. So for me, it started when I was in university. I was studying to be a doctor and I was a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I know I know it's hard to tell. I don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Maybe it was, was a tiny home, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So, I mean, I, I had everything planned out what was, was going to happen in my life. Mm. And then all of a sudden I got hit with arthritis. Yeah. And within months, I was in intense pain in every single joint in my body. 
there were nights where I'd sip my dinner through a straw because my jaw was so swollen and I couldn't move it. And it was just like, ah, okay, mm. wow, liquid today. And as my body deteriorated, I started to lose, like I would get deformity in the bones. I started to lose the cartilage. There were some, some mornings uh, later on in the process where I could feel my ankle and my shin grinding bone on bone because there just wasn't any cartilage set, uh, separating them anymore. And I, this is how I had to get through my days. And of course, I tried medication. I tried diet and supplements. I tried acupuncture. I went on to like yoga and like anything I could get my hands on, I would try it out. And the crazy thing is that everything worked for just a little while and then it would just stop working again. So I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out what was going on. Because yeah, they people, know why it hit you so suddenly like that. Is that typical? No, it's not not usually that young and not that powerful. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So they just, well, this is just happening. <laughs> right. So um, and yeah, and I I struggled with that for almost 18 years. Wow. Before I uh I actually met the guy that would change my perception on on reality itself, which was really cool and the thing is you may not have gone through physical problems like this but have you ever had situations where you've got the plan all laid out for what you're going to do and then out of nowhere just bam that plan is gone <laughs> and you're like what the hell yeah yeah and 18 years that's a long time it's a long time deal with chronic pain did you i know that you're about to tell us about this person who inspired you to think differently but during that time what did you do to maintain some sense of hope or possibility that this is going to be cured or healed or something? So there were times where I just didn't think it was ever going to be cured. Right. Uh, there were, there was periods where I was in complete despair. Uh, I was just in so much pain. All I could do is try to like barely think through the pain, mm. but I just kept trying to make my life work. I was determined to have some sort of life. And the arthritis would go into remission, remission sometimes, and then come back full on. And I couldn't figure out what what was causing it to do that. But you learn to endure the pain. So arthritics will just build a, a pain tolerance, but then they take action through the pain. So you will you will use anywhere from two to ten times as much energy to do the same action as a regular person. So it looks like you're just tired all the time because you're actually expending all this energy all the time just to push yeah. through your joints. Yeah. Boy, that makes right. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that was that was just my life, right? And and eventually, I found out about a program called Combined Therapy in India, and they had success with multiple illnesses, and that's what really caught my attention because I've been going to things for arthritis. And I know people go to things for a cancer or diabetes. And, they're, and I, I was talking to my dad about it. He goes, no, they do everything. I'm like, how can they do everything? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So because it didn't make any sense, I decided I got to try it because everything else made sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So I flew over there and I and, uh, talked with my, my, men, my now mentor. And because it was in India, I expected him to do this whole, oh, Shiraz, we're going to heal you. Heal, Shiraz, heal. Right? <laughs> and I was prepared for that. <laughs> but that's not what happened. He just sat me down and talked to me for about two weeks, going through my entire life story. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like being with a psychiatrist, only he wasn't trying to solve anything. He was just gathering information. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the two weeks, he goes, Shiraz, you believe you're responsible for everyone in your life. So I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I know you don't think you do, but from everything you've told me, you've created this belief that you need to be responsible for everyone. And it started when you were eight years old. So I thought, well, I know I'm a responsible guy, but I don't think I'm responsible for everyone. That's just insane. And what does it even have to do with arthritis? He said, oh, you don't want to be responsible for everyone. Yeah, he said, and if you're lying in bed in pain, you don't have to be responsible for anyone and you don't have to feel guilty about it. If people can see you're struggling just to get through the day, they won't ask you to take care of them. This is the solution for a problem you don't realize you have. Ding! <laughs> 
yeah. So mm. I said, well, oh, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And he said, but that's what most chronic illnesses are, solutions to problems people don't realize they have. Mm. And so I said, okay. So if what you're saying is true, all I have to do is say, I'm not going to be responsible for anyone but me. And the arthritis should just go away. Right? And he said, yes, if you truly believe it deep down. Mm. So I gathered my will and I said, I'm not going to be responsible for anyone except me. And you know what happened in that moment? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> a little quick <laughs> yeah that seemed quick doesn't it however when i woke up the next morning there was no pain there was more mobility uh there was no inflammation and i could even breathe better it was really weird so i'm freaking out mm. because 18 years of an illness doesn't go away overnight yeah. it's not possible and yet i'm like what is happening now the damage that had occurred was still there. It didn't all just magically go away. But the arthritis itself, the inflammation, the pain, gone. Hmm. And there was a track at this place where I was staying. And I was on that track every day. And I was doing my little old man shuffle because that's basically what my body was. The condition is like I was like 70 years old or something. And the sad thing is I'm getting passed by 70-year-old people on the track as I'm trying to move <laughs> Oh, no, that's demoralizing. But it was. It was just like, oh, my God. But this this particular day, I'm passing everyone. I'm passing people younger than me. I'm weaving in and out of people. And they're looking at me going, what the hell? Because they've been watching me for two weeks trying to get around this track. Hmm. And I'm just like, yeah, I know, right? This is crazy. Wow. When I went back home, no one asked me to be responsible for them. I mean, this was a belief created by an eight-year-old, so it didn't actually exist in the real world. But I was so caught up that if I let go of the arthritis, it'll suddenly happen that I held on to the arthritis. And that's, that's just changed everything. Because when I looked into this, this isn't just about illness. Your mind prioritizes the avoidance of emotional distress over physical circumstances. So... In order to avoid guilt for not being able to take care of everyone, I created arthritis. And the emotions it tries to avoid the most are guilt, shame, and heartbreak. So when I took this and I applied it to different areas of my life, everything started to make sense. Right? When I was 19 years old, I was, had my first long-term girlfriend, and she just crushed my heart when we broke up. I, she, she left me for another guy. And you know those movies where the guy is like on the couch and the pizza boxes are out and he's in his PJs? And that was me for, for a while. Right? It's just done. Right? So, uh, yeah. And I look at those movies now because I think some people go, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, no, it's not ridiculous. Trust me, it's not ridiculous. <laughs> so since then, I haven't had really deep relationships. And I thought I just kept meeting the wrong people. But then I realized I don't want to get my heart broken. So I've been making sure I don't connect with people. Mm -hmm. But this year, I've been connecting with everyone, not just romantically. All my relationships have deepened because I'm willing to get my heart broken if that's what it takes to have my heart full. Oh, that's a great way to put right? it. Yeah. Hmm. And I also noticed that my income had got, I'd never gotten past like this thing is $110,000 a year. And it, my income rose quickly and then just hit this barrier and wouldn't go much higher than that. And I couldn't figure out what was going on because I knew how to make money. But then when I started looking back at my past again, I remembered when I was young, people are like uh, saying, well, you're so gifted. I have, I have like 155 IQ. They, they said, you're going to do such great things. You're going to make so much money. And we get to, to reap the benefits of that. So they basically told me they were going to leech off me as soon as I became rich and famous. <laughs> And so I'm like, I don't want people leeching off me. I don't want to have to spend my money on other people. So my unconscious mind said, you know, 110 is a good space where you can live comfortably, but you, people can't keep asking you for money. Hmm. So when I said, you know what, if people try to get my money, I'm not going to feel guilt or shame. I'm not going to get angry and annoyed. I'm just like, no, you can't have it. And I've made more money this year than I've ever made in my life. Oh. <laughs> so. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. So your your book then and your message is that is about that we get these beliefs and stories in our head, but stories isn't like once upon a time. No. There's a specific definition that you have for stories. So um now that we know a little bit of your history, mm -hmm. tell us what your book preaches for or teaches for all of us to be able to do in regard to beliefs and stories. So it teaches you to start to recognize your stories. Mm. Right. And people, I mean, if you ever you ever say things like this always happens to me. Right. Uh, whenever I try this, this happens. Story of my life. Mm. Those are stories. And the thing is, we think it's just reality. And we have all this evidence that it's reality. But for the most part, we've put the evidence there. We're the ones dumping the evidence so we can look at it and go, see, that's right. So like, for instance, if, if you have a, a story that your partner always cheats on you, you will seek out partners you know will cheat on you. And in fact, if there were two people in front of you that were exactly the same in every way, even looked exactly the same, but one is faithful and one is a cheater, you would feel an, a, a romantic attraction to the cheater. And you won't know why. So like, I don't know, they're exactly the same, but I just want to be with this one, right? Wow. And then you go out with this person and they cheat on you and you're like, oh my God. But then you wouldn't go to the other one because you'd reason it through your mind. Well, if that one cheated, the other one must cheat, right? So that you don't go to the ones that don't cheat. You, you put the evidence there for yourself. Right. Wow. Yeah. And and that can happen subconsciously as well. Or you could be in somebody's energy and you pick up a belief mm -hmm. and, and begin to believe in something that you might not have agreed to believe in. Oh yeah. I <laughs> that, that that's a funny thing because I had uh 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 I don't know why my brain's going out on this Ma mail, a physical because I keep thinking email. There was an actual physical letter. I don't get many of those anymore. Um, <laughs> it came to me from the CRA, which is the, uh, the Canadian IRS, that said, you owe $40,000 in back taxes. Right? Mm. And I was just like, what? That's the kind what? of letter you want to get. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? And this was just after I had come out of two years of zero income, not low income, zero income. Mm. So I had accumulated a bunch of debt. I finally got a job so that I was making money to pay that off. And now there's $40,000 extra. So I went to my accountant and he's, and I'm like, what the hell's this? And he goes, well, apparently you filed some stuff using your, your name instead of the company name. So all that income is now personal, not company. Mm. And I'm like, can't we change it? And he goes, no, you filed it as your name. <laughs> right. No. And, and I went to financial advisors and tried to figure out how to solve this. And they're like, you, like I even said, can I just declare bankruptcy and wipe the whole thing down? I said, no, you make over $100,000 a year. You can't declare bankruptcy. And I said, but even at my salary, with the amount of debt I'm in, all I'm doing is pretty much paying the interest for the rest of my life. And you're like, well, you, you can go quit your job and work at McDonald's and then you can declare bankruptcy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like that option. <laughs> like, yeah. So this went on for like three weeks until I re realized that you can buy other people's stories. I teach this. I just didn't think, like, could a $40,000 debt be someone else's story? That seems ridiculous. That seems impossible. But I hmm. thought, well, let's look at that. And when I looked into it, I was like, yeah, this isn't my story. So I just said, I'm done. I'm stepping out of the story. And then I went straight to my accountants and I said, look, we got to resolve this. And he's like, I I've been going over it. I can't think of anything. And then he looked at me and goes, why are you smiling? This is a serious thing right and it's, i'm smiling because for me i know it's over i just got rid of it and then it was like the awareness hit him he goes oh, if we file this form and then he just started talking in accountant ease and and at the end he goes you'd have at the end you'd only have to pay a 500 late filing fee but you wouldn't have to pay the forty thousand dollars are you okay with that <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> okay <with> that. <laughs> and it just went away and what was funny was the next year i was talking with my friend star and she out of the blue she brought up this i finally got through that forty thousand dollar debt to my ex-boyfriend i'm like what and she goes yeah a year ago i i, I owed him a forty thousand dollars i had to borrow money from him and i owed him that much i said did you tell me this a year ago she goes no but i remember we were together and i was thinking about it i was like oh my god <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah wow so you yeah. bought 
just to recap, you bought into her reality. Yes. And, and didn't even really realize it. No. So, so how do you how do you prevent that kind of thing? Or how does that how does that how does that go unnoticed? I guess is what I'm trying to say. So it goes unnoticed because we think it's just circumstance. Hmm. But when you realize nothing's circumstance, you're creating every single thing in your life, then the question doesn't become, oh my God, why does this have to happen to me? It's why did I invite this in? Why did I decide to create this? And there's always a reason. Hmm. Right. And so, so that I, means we have to change the story to change the circumstance. Yeah. So when you start living a different story and you start it consciously and then you, you start creating the evidence that you're doing that, it'll go into the subconscious and that's just the way you live. Then your whole re uh, reality works, works so much better. Like one of my clients, uh, she wanted better travel. So we started creating a story of five-star travel experiences. Whenever she travels, the five-star travel experience. And it was really funny because we, when we were talking about the Mexico trip I went to, uh, she... She booked a room at the Fives, which is uh, a posh hotel there. But uh, when she got there, she was sharing a room with someone else. And there was just a king-size bed. And so she calls downstairs and she goes, look, I, I like my friend, but I don't like her that much. <laughs> so <laughs> this, we set a room for two. They go, it is a room for two. The couch is a pull-out bed. And she's uh -huh. like, no, not acceptable. No, we both need beds. And they said, well, if you want to upgrade to a suite, it's $80 more a night. And she's like, nope, not acceptable either. Right. So she called the organizer and said, look, this is what's going on. And we can't do this. I don't want to share a bed with someone or make, make someone sleep on the couch. And so the organizer said, oh, okay, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the difference for you. And she's like, oh, really? And she goes, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. no, didn't know this was happening. I want you to have a good time. I don't want anyone to be unhappy. So suddenly, they had a suite. And so, so now wow. this is a much better experience. But they got to the suite and, and she was starting to take out her stuff. And then they noticed there was a problem in the suite. And so the person showing them said, okay, you know what? We, we can have this fixed by tomorrow. And I don't want to put you back in the old room tonight. So we'll put you in the presidential suite tonight. Uh. Okay. So, so they took them, took her to the presidential suite. And so the presidential suite, there's a room with a king size bed on one side. and It's got its own ensuite, huge living area. Then on the other side, there's another room with two double beds and its own ensuite. And, and she looks at this, she goes, how much is this a night? They go, it's $30 more than the price of the suite you were paying. She goes, oh, we can pay $30 more a night, especially between two of us. And eventually yeah. they got a third person. So between three of them, because there were three beds. So it's only $10 more a night than they were originally paying and they're staying in the penthouse. Wow. Right? So now, because her whole thing is five-star travel experience. So now they're in the penthouse and the guy, and they've agreed to do this. And then the guy says, do you want to see the pool? And she goes, the, the pool for the building? She goes, no, you have a private pool. What? And so he takes her up a flight of stairs and there's a private rooftop pool for the presidential suite. And that's where she stayed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And so you're saying this was because she created this five-star travel story in her mind yes. that these opportunities came to her because she'd already created that reality. That whenever she goes, she has a five-star experience. So the next trip she had was LA. She didn't get the five-star accommodations, but because of that, her room and all her meals got comped. She found a way to make that happen. Mm. And now we're heading to Vegas uh, on Friday, and we've booked a helicopter tour of the Grand Canyon to get our five-star experience. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. So <laughs> it's just what's happening. Yeah, that's a good example. So, so then you're, what you're saying then is it's really simple, but we first have to identify the stories Mm -hmm. that we've been telling ourselves like but is no, it is it really that does. simple is it really it's, that simple it's and... incredibly simple huh. but it's not easy if we're easy everyone would have everything they want but the methodology is incredibly simple hmm. so you just have, you have to look at the stories that are limiting in your life and decide to get out of them and then you have to then you decide what new stories you want to create and the cool thing is, once you get the new stories created, then eventually you say, oh, I'm done with this story. Let's amp it up a level. And you have to get rid of that story and create a new story and just keep doing that. What's the hard part? What I mean, 
you say it's easy, but yeah. it's not. No, it's, it's simple, simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. So, so what makes it hard? What makes it hard is you have all this evidence that it's not possible, that other people have failed to do it, that you haven't been able to do it, and you have to ignore all that, even while more evidence shows up, until the correct evidence shows up, and then it just locks in. Hmm. Right. And so, and especially because you're gonna have, if, especially if you're talking to other people and they're not in that story, they're gonna tell you why it's impossible or it's too hard or it can't be done or it's not for you, and you have to ignore all of that. Right. The other thing is, they've shown that in with quantum physics that when you do experiment in quantum physics, the the thing that the scientist anticipates happening in experiments will affect the outcome of the experiment. Right. So. Yeah, so it's basically a visualization. What you're already imagining happening happens. But this is going on at an unconscious level for the most part for, for everyone around. So you've got these stories running in your head that this always happens to me and this is going to happen if I do this. I mean, it's something just as simple as, you know, if I'm if I'm holding an object and I let go, it's going to drop. There's just, that's it. But, and, and you think about this, if I'm holding an object and it's drop, there's no doubt in your mind of what's going to happen. Right. And when there's no doubt, it has to happen. But the things we have that there's no doubt in, it's things like, well, something always goes wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or I'm not worthy. I'm or, not worthy, yeah. I don't deserve that, or... So when you get to a place of no doubt of something positive, that positive thing has to show up. And in order to put it in your subconscious, you have to start holding thoughts for 30 seconds or more because that's what, how long it takes for the neural patterns to start to form. Most people can hold a thought for less than seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so, so describe what it looks like to hold a thought. What do you mean about that? So even if it's just like counting, like if I say, uh, just count in your mind from one to 10, going one second at a time, what happens with most people is one, two, three. This is easy. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And so that's what happens. Every little stray thought has effects. So one of the things I teach people is how to hold a thought for over 30 seconds. And then you do that repeatedly. And then that starts to rewire your neural network. Hmm. Right. Wow. And then eventually those thoughts become what show up in your life. Now, the other element is to hold the emotion associated with that thought. And that's where it gets really hard because if you're frustrated that your bank account has a $5 balance, to get into the joy of having lots of money is difficult. Yeah. Right? And so this is why most people don't have everything they want because they're stuck in the old, old emotions. But when you get that the thoughts and the emotions are what's causing you to have what you have, not your physical circumstances, then you should really want to learn how to train your thoughts and emotions to be different because everything just changes instantaneously once they're there. Hmm. Okay, right. so how do we discover these stories? I mean, because, you know, you're right that we probably have these little tapes that play in our head, like nobody listens to me. Or, you know, um, that person doesn't care about what I have to say or, or I'm fat or ugly or whatever it might be. Okay, so we tell ourselves these stories. Mm -hmm. How do we start? I mean, if, if it's just a matter of changing our thoughts, um, how do we know which thoughts we need to change? Because like, you know, they're, they're there all the time. How do we start to identify what is it that's keeping me from having this? What's that thought process? Is there something that helps us to discover the actual thoughts? I mean, does it go deep or is it just right there yeah. on the surface? The, the easiest solution is you give me a call, but <laughs> <laughs> let's work through Thank this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, notice what's coming out of your mouth, All right? Mm. You're, you're going to say your thoughts. A lot of times, like when I'm, when I'm doing an initial talk with someone, they'll just say stuff. And I'm like, do you always say that? And it's like, well, it's true. No, it's true because you say it. <laughs> like, like, you bought into it. That's your yeah. reality. Huh. So, yeah, and this is the thing. Once you start doing this, you become aware of what everyone's saying. I hear the stories coming out of everyone's mouth all the time. And sometimes it's like, wow, that's a good story. Maybe I'll take that one on. 
but a lot of the times it's like oh yeah you gotta stop saying that which <laughs> you really do yeah right uh just yesterday i was talking to someone uh no one wants to spend money anymore no one has money i'm like okay <laughs> if you're saying that and thinking that and you are trying to run a business good luck getting clients hmm. right yeah. well and this is where and i don't want to go off into the weeds with this but this is where you know the influence from from what we're seeing and what we're we're tuned into I, i'll say it like that and and that is creating a reality for us that we believe yes absolutely on what we're being subjected to and that necessarily is not the truth yeah because remember that most people buy into the reality of everyone else around them because it's just comfortable it's easy and you've got all this validation but the people that don't create extraordinary lives so and you can tell you can tell where they are the most millionaires were were made in the great depression the most billionaires were made during covid yeah. <laughs> right that's fascinating there are people living different realities Right? And so they just ignored everything and they stopped looking and, and buying into frustration, lack and um, adversity and went, where's the opportunity? Right. And what can I where? How can I be in this space of there's abundance going on? Because there's there's more than enough money on the planet to, for everyone to have everything they want. It's just distributed in a horrible way. And, and I say that from more of a judgment thing. It's not. It's distributed in exactly the way each person wants it to be, according to their stories. Has <laughs> right. hmm. I don't know. I need more convincing. <laughs> what are some? I know. I know you teach prosperity. What are some of the? What are some of the habits that people need to start looking at, or develop, or start thinking about to create prosperity in their lives? To create prosperity. <sighs> It's, it's interesting for, for me, it's not about habits. It's just about things like, like I'll ask questions and you can tell from your emotional response exactly where you are. So would you love to make an extra hundred thousand dollars over the, into 2023? Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay? If you make that extra hundred thousand dollars for people to come up and say, Todd, can you invest in my company? Todd, you've got all this extra money. Can I have some? Todd, are you using your money to take care of the family? You're sh you should be doing that because you're making all that money. Todd, are you in, are you helping the right charities? You've got this money as a rich person. It's your responsibility because so many rich people aren't helping the unfortunate. And you better be doing it. Are you okay to entertain those conversations? Or did you have an emotional response to what I was saying? Oh, well, I get that all the time. <laughs> and I have three kids, right? Okay. And I have a successful machine shop. So you know i i have to weigh that and and take a look at my my situation at that point in time okay so but the thing is the emotional response mm. because if there is an emotional response and you're just like oh someone's asking me let me just look at it and it's like oh my god again and oh i hate when this happens then if you make more money your subconscious is going to say this is just going to amplify it so oh. it will stop your income at the most comfortable place for it so that you don't go into this place like, oh, my God, I, I can't take it. All the, and, and that may or may not happen, but you create a story of that's what's going to happen when I make more money. So that creates a financial ceiling. All right. The other thing I have, especially in the spiritual world, it's so horrible that people have so much and are living these lives of luxury while all these people are struggling and suffering. Oh. The more passionate you are about that, the less money you will make. Because if you make more money, you'll become one of those horrible people. Those horrible people. <laughs> right? Yeah. Something, something else that came to my mind too is, it, and this is something that I tell my, I catch myself, but I, I say it all the time is, is you know, there's nothing like becoming a small business owner and fielding calls from investors all day long, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with that thought and that statement, I'm attracting more, correct? Yes, yes. <laughs> hmm. So how does this, or, or does it work with, say, addiction? Because okay. I, would, I would imagine that there are stories being formed in the minds of people who have, you know, propensity to be addicted to substances and drugs and 
to yeah. everything else. So how does how does this rewriting your reality work with something like that where it really is a physical uh, physiological need for something? See, but here's the thing: the stories you're in now are also a physiological need. Mm. That's that's why I changed my title to interventionist because I've discovered that when we start to rewrite these stories, people will come out of it, but then their body will go into physical withdrawal from the story and they'll bring it back. Hmm. Everything's an addiction now. Uh, one of the, one of the things that just blew my mind is this, there was a one a talk at a, a convention about uh, drug addiction, and this guy got up and said, "Well, there's." there's no no actual drug addiction. And the whole audience is like, what? He said, yeah, we don't have to worry about fighting the cartels and, and getting the drugs out because that's not the problem. And it was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? How can you be at this conference and say that? And he said, okay, let me ask you this. You guys know how easy it is to get drugs because you know kids are getting them on the streets. If you wanted to, could you get drugs? And like everyone's like, yeah, yeah, of course I could. I said, so why aren't you if drugs are so addictive? Like, why don't you even want to try it? Why aren't you? And, and they're like, well, I don't need to. And it's like, why? And he, when they talked about it, it came down to self-esteem. If mm -hmm. you're enjoying your life, if you're confident in, in your abilities, you don't need drugs. Dr you start drugs because you're feeling empty and hollow and you need something to, to fill that. So when you start working on a person's self-esteem, their need for drugs goes away. So it's not actually get them off the drugs. It's build them up as a person. Mm. and doing this kind of work builds you up as a person which decreases your need for drug until you're off it i've had people that had um, problems with alcohol and we got to the core problems with the alcohol and the cravings just went away hmm. wow so then can you rewrite several stories at one time or yes. is it you can okay yeah hmm so you, so then you, is it better to like write down these new storylines you're going to tell yourself, or is it just something that you start to think you, about? You, you can absolutely write them down for a while, but then eventually it's just going to be something you think about and that's something, especially something you feel, right? Hmm. So here's, here's the thing. When you have a thought, electrical and magnetic energy comes off your body. And they've actually done studies to measure this. And this is what's going on with the quantum experiments that, that energy is going into the, the experiment, right? So it's affecting the experiment. But they found that when you take a thought and align an emotion to it, whether it's good or bad, whether it's like love or anger or whatever, the electrical, in, in, uh, electrical output increases by a hundredfold. The magnetic mm -hmm. output increases by 5,000. <laughs> right. when, when you assign emotion to it a good positive yes emotion. positive or negative whatever emotion you put in so if you really really hate things going on in your life you will attract them that much more yeah. right but when you get into this thing of this is how what my life is like and i and i'm just enjoying it and i love that this is and you can hold those feelings and thoughts for per longer period longer periods of time that just starts to show up in your life and this is where a lot of people don't get it because they go to the thinking. If I think it, if I do a mantra, if I just think it over and over again, it'll happen. It's still going out there, but it's going out there this much instead of this much. Hmm. So hmm. emotion, emotion is the amplifier of the yeah. thought. Yes. If we were to roll that all up, fascinating. Yeah. So then do we need to look at not only the thought that we're having, but do we also say, how is this making me feel when I have this thought? Yeah. Is that part of it? Yeah. And and the thing is, you want to flip it around. How do I how do I want to feel? Because this is the, every emotion is a choice. It doesn't feel like that most of the time because we're running our this programming. But when you realize every single emotion is a choice, you can start making different choices. And you can tell it's a choice because I'm I've been hearing this a little more and more. Like because I guess I'm aware of it and I hear it from different people. Oh, when I have a conversation, I know he's going to piss me off. No, you've just decided that that's what's going to happen. Right? What's going to happen? We all experienced that at Thanksgiving recently, right? Sit down with our yeah. family. Well, I know I'm going to argue with Aunt Mary or whatever, you know. <laughs> <She> yeah. Always, <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this is the thing. A lot of people have already decided what emotions they're going to have. Hmm. And so are we manifesting that then? We're, we're manifesting Absolutely. those emotions because... Absolutely. We... 
not just the emotions, you're manifesting the situation so you can have those emotions because you're determined to have them. Wow. <laughs> right? Wow. You projected the reality that you want to experience. Yes. And so okay. then the universe, the universe really has no choice but to give you what you ask for. That's all it's doing all the time. It's always giving you what, exactly what you ask for, except it's listening to your unconscious mind, not your conscious mind. Yeah. Little, <laughs> little radio transmitter. Mm -hmm. hmm. Fascinating. Okay. Yeah. So, my friends, we only have about 10 minutes left. And I know that we wanted to spend some time talking about ringing in the new year, right? 2022 is gone. There's still some things to be done. And there's still some, there's plenty of time to close out those, what do I want to say, open agendas that you have from 2022. But this is the time that you really start thinking about 2023. What is it that I really, really, really want to bring in, occur, experience? And Shiraz, you have... I, I commend you, my friend, because New Year's Eve is probably the best time to start putting this in and anchoring it. So tell mm -hmm. us what you have cooking for New Year's Eve and how do people experience it? Where do they go to sign? Do they have to sign up? Can they show up? What, yeah. what am I going to see? What am I going to get? So you, you have to sign up. It is a uh, online Zoom event where... What are you calling it? What is it called? Clearing the negative energies of 2022. There you go. Yeah. Close the door, man. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. it. It's, yeah, it, it's funny because this, the whole thing was a fluke. I was actually trying to book a, um, an event with the place I used to work at and everything had been booked up for December because I waited too long, except for the afternoon of New Year's Eve. And I was just like, well, who's going to show up on an afternoon of New Year's Eve? But then I realized a lot of people have half days, so they'll actually be free in the afternoon. Why don't I try it? And it sold out. <laughs> right? wow. So that was nine years ago. So I've been doing it ever since. Wow. All right. And yeah, and this, we, we're going to, I'm going to talk about things that have come up, how stories work, how you can start clearing them out. And then I'm going to be working with people in the audience right there to clear stuff out of you. And the cool thing about these events is, I could be working on Todd on money issues. And then Jackie's like, I've got the exact same issue. So when I work on Todd, it clears for Jackie too. Mm. So you can get benefit of every person I work with without actually talking to me. A mutually shared experience. Yes. And so is this something that you come and attend? Is it how long during that day? Four hours, three hours? Well, the, it's hours? three hours. It's one to four Eastern. Okay. And then if the VIPs get a smaller, more intimate session where we go deeper from 4.30 to 6, if you want to go VIP. The VIPs so you also want to get- to be there for the whole time or is it a come and go thing? You, you technically want to be there for the whole time because okay. when other people's stuff's coming up, you're like, oh my God, I need that too. Because okay. a lot of times I've seen it, people go, until someone said it, I didn't realize I had it. Mm. And, and so, uh, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always well attended and I've always gotten great reviews from it and the VIPs as well. I have another workshop coming up a few days later called aligning to 2023. Mm. We clear you out and now we get you set. Right. So, Got it. yeah. Cool. Awesome. And how can they find out about this? Nope. I, two different questions here. What was, or maybe the same one. Go ahead, Todd. Oh, I was just, Jackie and I had the same thought at the same time. So I said, jinx. Okay. But I, well, you were both talking, so I didn't hear it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was wondering where, yeah, how do you find out about the event? Where do they go to to find out? You can go to energeticmagic.com okay. and then just click on events and there it'll be. Okay. Awesome. And I'm pretty sure we could probably put it in the show notes too. <laughs> so. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And I'll tell you that I have been on the receiving end of Shiraz's magic here. I've been to a workshops where he will talk to one person at a time and help you. And he calls you out. You know, if you, if you make a statement that he feels is not true, he'll say, that's not coming true for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Because Sometimes, like I was, I was trying to make that point earlier, is that sometimes these stories that we have are so ingrained, we don't even know they're untrue at this point. Yeah. 
And so we think, yeah, I could do that. But in reality, the story is telling us, no, you're, you've said that you can't do that or you won't do that. And so Shiraz is very in tune to understand, no, what you, what you just said to me is not coming up true. So there's something else in your story that we need to talk about here because uh, there's more, there's deeper to go. So um, it, it is pretty amazing. And you come away knowing some things about yourself that, that you didn't know you needed to know about yourself. <laughs> yeah. So. And it's, it's really interesting because what I do is completely teachable. And the people I've worked with for a while have learned how to tune into themselves. And one of my clients, she just makes me smile every time because she's she'll come in with an issue and she'll say, but I really want this to change. And then she go, that didn't come up as true. OK, let's find out why. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so tell us about some of the people that you've worked with over the last year. Maybe there's some ways that you can share with us what their original story was and how you maybe just one person for lack of time, but. Um, yeah, besides this person that was the five-star travel, is there someone else you want to share with us about how you worked with them? Uh, wow. Okay. I'll try to pick one. Um, Kim, uh, Kimberly Crow. Hmm. She, when she decided she wanted to travel more, she had a story, which is a very common story that if I'm going to be traveling, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to cost me more. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to have less income, even though I might make more money. Hmm. And, uh, and that's just a story. So we shifted that story. And what was funny was she calls me two weeks later and she's like, guess what? I'm in a multi-million dollar mansion. And I have access to the office owned by the people that have the mansion and their vehicles while they're away. And I get all of this for free as wow. I'm traveling. <laughs> right? and, so, wow. and so since then, she's, she's, she doesn't have a home anymore. She just travels full time and she's making more and more money every year. Because that's her story now. Hmm. <laughs> right. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh my goodness, my friends, we only have about three minutes left. And and Shiraz, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. I there's probably more that we can talk about. So maybe we could make this a regular deal and see you next December, huh? Hey, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> but is there is there a last minute thing you would like to let her know, let our audience know about or I mean, the, you, you talked about the simplicity and it does, it is a little bit difficult, but it is totally manageable. Yeah. So the thing I tell everyone all the time, uh, don't be afraid to be the happiest person in the room. Right? You're not always going to be happy, but people are afraid to be too happy and there's no such thing. Right? Mm. And the, the happier you are and allow yourself to be, the more people around you allow themselves to be happier. So think about who you're going to end up being surrounded with if you're not afraid to be happy. Hmm. Well, and I think, too, one thing I've heard you say before is that, like you said, sometimes we we can purchase other people's stories or we start living their stories because maybe we've heard our mom or our father say something over and over again. And we begin to develop our own story around their viewpoints, their beliefs. And that's something we have to really try to avoid too, right? Probably about 90% of your stories are your parents. Mm. So. That yeah. we've agreed to, that we didn't know we agreed to. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Just well, too. that's going to be a great event. I encourage everybody to attend this New Year's Eve event because it will. It's nice to rid yourself of all that crap before you, you start a new What's year. What's that website, Shiraz? Energeticmagic.com. Energetic magic.com go and check it out and sign up for today oh he's got it right on top of his head there <laughs> ah there you go energetic magic. jack any <laughs> takeaways i can see a big smile on your face you just got energized for the rest of the day and sure. it's gonna be a magic day right mm -hmm, absolutely yeah yep. santa claus was here so <laughs> oh, thanks <laughs> Thank you again, my friend, for showing up. I, I enjoyed this discussion. I enjoyed our last discussion, and I'm looking forward for many, many more. Sounds good. Namaste, Thank my you. friend. That's about all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. My biggest hope is you'll tell a friend about the show and tell a friend about our YouTube channel. We have many, 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 many shows there. Next year is going to be a whiz-bang year. Jackie and I have got some great guests lined up. 
and we're always looking for more. So if you know somebody that we might enjoy uh, having on Life Mastery Radio, please let us know. Lastly, please, 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 please make it a great day because it's all about a thought and a choice. Bye-bye for now. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Life Mastery Radio. Join Todd Allen and Jackie Bailey and their guests of leading authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific. Learn to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery through stories and messages to support your well-being and most evocative dreams. Visit their website, www.lifemasteryradio.com. Join their mailing list and be notified about upcoming guests. That's lifemasteryradio.com.